what cooler do you need for a hot running, slightly overclocked 3D rendering computer that will be running day and night 24 7 at full throttle? I'm going to tell you why I chose the Air Cooled Dark Rock Pro 4 as I was choosing parts for my new animation making machine. So I went and ordered a 3900. X 12 core CPU. I knew I'd be leaving it 24 7 rendering animations at 100% CPU usage. It's a hot running CPU, but I knew this before I bought it. And that's why I knew the Wraith Prism Cooler AMD would send with it would not do for me. This will do fine on 8 or 6 cores, but not on 12 that will be overclocked and running non stop. I knew I needed a better solution. But being away from my machine while it runs full speed, I worried about a water cooler because it could lose a pump and sink the ship. Or what if I built a massive custom loop and it leaked while I was gone? I need reliability and performance both. This led me right back to the beginning of my build. Be Quiet. Be Quiet is known for no compromise quality and regular improvements through the years. Dark Rock Pro 4 is a really good example of this. For one thing, this thing is massive. It has a 250 watt TDP, referring to the amount of thermals it can accept and dispel. Eh, this is not a perfectly scientific standard of measurements. So safe to say that this can handle the strongest CPUs available for AM4 socket. For an air cooler, you'll find this one at the top of the list in terms of performance. If any tests show any better performance from an air cooler, we're talking about a couple degrees max. Although that's usually accomplished to the detriment of sound. This is a silent cooler due to the design of the Be Quiet Silent Wing fans. It comes with a 120 millimeter fan at the front drawing air in and a 135 millimeter goes to the center. The 120 millimeter is shipped already attached with wire bales. But let's talk about just why you need a cooler. See, the CPU puts out a huge amount of heat, and without that heat being taken away instantaneously, it'll destroy itself in mere seconds without a cooler. The purpose of the cooler is for the flat bottom of the cooler's heat sink to connect to the flat top of the heat spreader on the CPU. The heat will transfer from the CPU up to the cooler, and the heat will be taken away by the fresh, cool air and blown out the back of the case. The heat transfer inside the cooler itself is facilitated by the seven heat transfer pipes that have a liquid that boils easily. When boiled, it converts to a gas and moves along the heat pipe carrying the heat to the far edges of the cooler where it will return to a liquid when it cools. This carries the heat far to the edges of the cooler for very efficient cooling characteristics. But this massive huge cooler also means you may not be able to use it in your present case. It's big and a narrow case may leave you with no way to put the side panel on. It's best to check and see if the case you use or plan to get will fit this huge unit inside of it. You can go to PCPartsPicker.com, look it up. I'll leave a link in the description below. Here you can see I entered dark base and got the list of be quiet dark base cases. And I see mine is at the top of the list. In fact, if not already done, you might want to bookmark that site. It's invaluable. So let's unpack this beast of a cooler. This unit is well packed. They want it to make it to you undamaged. Note the attention to detail even when it comes to the instruction book and accessories box. The foam is cut to ensure no movement of materials in transit. The packing standards are very high. This usually extends to a condition of the product itself, meaning we can already raise our hopes high that the standards of engineering and construction are optimum. So you get the screwdriver, the cooler, and two fans instruction books in multiple languages, mounting materials for AMD and Intel. The middle fan is bigger, 135 millimeter. The inner fan is 120 millimeter to help this block unit clear your RAM modules. There is also a cutout at the bottom to help raise the fins up some to clear. It works just fine with my G-Skill Trident Neal RGBs. The middle fan is packed in cardboard stowed between the two towers of the cooler where you will install it with a set of the wire bales after installation onto the motherboard. I like the dark industrial looks of this. I enjoy the black dot appearance and that's more than paint. It's got a surface ceramic particle coating designed to give looks and protection to the metal while also helping facilitate the heat extraction from the metal. This is a coating that will not inhibit heat removal but in fact helps in this regard. The unit comes with two connection options, one for AMD, which I'm using, and another for Intel. 
In the main baggie they come in, there are some components that are common to both builds. This includes the bottom mounting bridge that goes over the heat sink. You get a fan splitter so both fans can be connected to a single fan header. You get a very tiny amount of thermal paste. Make sure you have some extra on hand. You get two sets of wire bales for the middle and the optional back fan. The longer shank wire bales are for the third fan, should you choose to get one yourself. That fan will have standard mounting brackets, so it needs a special wire bale. I wanted a fan with a faster pull, hoping to maximize the airflow and even more to act as a redundant fan in case one of the other two goes out. Here's what you get specifically for AMD. You get four plastic spacer sleeves that AMD calls AMD spacer nuts. You get two mounting brackets, two small screws, four small screws that attach brackets to the spacer nuts. Pay no attention to the rubber rings, they are AMD 3 specific. Now to install this onto the socket, you unscrew the mounting base that the Wraith Prism would have attached to. You're left with a little stud sticking up. Slide the AMD spacer nuts over the studs. Then you get the two mounting brackets. You put a screw into each end where it says AM4. Those get screwed into a post. Ensure the orientation is facing toward the CPU. When you attach the two screws, alternate between them, making them finger tight not wrist tight. We're not driving it to LA. Metal to metal contact can transfer heat, but even though those surfaces look smooth, they're actually not on a microscopic level. There's air between those metal parts, and air will not transfer heat as well as metal to metal contact, so we stick a compound between called thermal paste or thermal grease. It's a paste that can readily transfer heat between the metal components, making the most use of the connection and the cooler. Without it, the CPU will likely get overly hot. Be Quiet sends a tiny, tiny bit of thermal paste in the box, but if you have to take it off for some reason, you might not have enough for a full reinstallation. I prefer Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Yay! anyway. When looking the cooler over, you'll notice a protective plastic sheet over the base. Make sure you remove that or heat will not transfer properly. Most computer experts agree that your thermal paste might need to be replaced every five to seven years, so this is something you're likely to do a few times in your life. When you think it's time to replace the thermal paste for this cooler, I'd recommend taking the whole unit and the motherboard out. It's really tough reaching into a restricted space trying to attach this unit. Before installation, you need to clean all mounting surfaces very well with high-grade alcohol and a lint-free cloth. This is to remove any contamination, especially oils from the skin. They might try to boil once the computer is engaged. I like to use regular coffee filters for this. Apply the thermal paste. This is one of the things people argue about. Most say to apply a drop the size between a grain of uncooked rice and a pea. The idea is a flat base of the cooler will spread the drop of paste over the heat spreader evenly to the very corners even. But most tests show that it becomes a big round blotch and the corners are unprotected. I like using a credit card or other spreading device to spread it evenly, if very thinly, over the area, including very corners. But the risk of this is, they say you may trap a bubble of air in the pockets as you spread the mix. And yes, I applied a bit much here. The thermals uh, afterwards are working fine. It goes without saying that all of these things are much easier out of the case. This is a huge unit and it's hard to work around in the confines of a case normally, much less when you've got a giant chunk of metal in the middle. So the installation. Make sure you got your RAM installed. You might not be able to get it into place once the cooler's in. There are two fake bolt heads on the top that are the access holes for the screws. It helps to remove them before placement. So you've placed the thermal paste onto a clean CPU. You've removed the plastic protective sheet from the base of the cooler and cleaned it to be sure. Place the mounting bar onto the base and let it kind of stick into place. For this build, I didn't do that. So I wanted to let you know it's easier beforehand. Now gently place the cooler onto the proper spot. Hold it steady for a second. The CPU heat spreader actually is higher in the center, even though it seems level. This convex surface is designed so the base of the cooler unit will press it down, gently spreading the paste over the entire heat spreader, pushing it out 
and pushing out all air bubbles as it settles into place. But if not held gently into place, you may see it wanting to slide a bit to the side because this cooler is a little top heavy. Now, if you haven't already put it into place, put that bridge over the heat sink, let the grooves match, settle into place. Now you put the screws in, and this is the part that seems to throw a lot of people. Oh, the problems people seem to have with this. This is why Be Quiet gives us these really great options that their older cooler didn't have, and why I appreciate Be Quiet for the fact that they look at the problems that everybody has with these things, and the next generation is always better. Okay, you got all these bolt heads at the top. They give us such a great steampunk look. Two of them are fake and are directly over where the screws attach. This is designed for your long shank screwdriver to use. You stick the magnetic screwdriver halfway in, bend it around to twist the tip out, and you attach the screw to it. Then you insert it into the bar and start to screw it in a few threads. The thing with this, as many things involving mechanics, you must make sure you don't make all kinds of lopsided attachments, meaning you should get both screws started just a little bit and then slowly go from one to the other, screwing them down alternately to gently spread the thermal compound evenly. It's like installing an intake manifold on a car, but there's no specific torque requirements, just finger tight, but fully tight. Now we get to the fans. Once the unit's fully attached, you can start adding the fans. They both come with some pretty nice braided cables. Make sure the middle one is facing the right direction. Some people have challenges attaching the fans due to somewhat cumbersome wire bales. I found them not too awkward, but I can see how people might gripe a bit. Now with the back fan, I sometimes twist a cable around the fan to give a shorter throw so I don't have a bunch of cable attached up at the top. You use the longer bales for the back fan. Then you put the motherboard into a case. The giant cooler makes it easier to hold on to. Installation of the motherboard is another subject. Overall, if you're looking for cooling for a demanding workstation, and if you have the case dimensions to suit it, you will likely be very happy with the Dark Rock Pro 4. It ranks right up there with many water coolers and neck to neck with any air coolers with just a couple of exceptions of a couple degrees Celsius. And usually those ones will be much louder. This is surprisingly quiet for the amount of thermal dispersal it can accomplish. This is cheaper than comparable water coolers, although much pricier than most air coolers. If you're running an intense system, if you're gaming all the time or creating and have a big powerful CPU, if you want a reliable system you don't have to worry about, this might be the cooler for you.